Elon Musk's uh, is uh, Elon Musk is backing an artificial intelligence company. It developed a bot that plays video games, and actually, this bot beat some of the world's best human players. Joining us now is OpenAI. That's the name of the company. The co-founder, Greg Brockman. He's with us now. Isn't this uh, look? If you've got a bot and it beats humans at video games, isn't that a sign that bots, robots, are taking over? Isn't it? Well, I, I think that, and first of all, thank you for having me, uh, that the artificial intelligence is really about enhancing what humans can do. And if you look at what's happened with uh, humans uh, having their capabilities exceeded in Go or chess, that it's actually made those games more interesting and more deep, that the top players have learned a lot from these systems. That's and a fair looking point. forward, that I think it's a, about building systems that can really be deployed with increasing responsibility in the real world. For example, with autonomous uh, elderly care robots that are able to go and help people uh, live their lives better and more fulfillingly. So how does it actually work? How did, the, did your bot actually learn? I mean, it does learn as it goes along, learns how to play these games. How do you do that? that that's right, that's right. So it actually plays 180 years worth of gameplay against itself every single day. <laughs> and at first it just starts entirely random, just walking around the map, not knowing what to do, and it just tries stuff out. And then, when it does something that was good, it gets a little bit of reward. And it reconfigures itself to make repeating that action be a little bit more probable. And so it just keeps wandering around, doing random things, getting better and better. And one thing that's really interesting is that we see that the skill progression that it learns matches that of the skill progression of a human. That it learns the basic skills of the game, and then eventually it starts to learn long-term planning and long-term strategy. Whoa. Now, am I right is that in the intro I said, your bot beat the world's best human players. Is that accurate? So last year, we had a preliminary version of the system, which in the one-on-one -on -one version of Dota 2, which is the game that we're focusing on, uh, defeated the world's best. We are now working on the full five versus five game, where you have a team of five bots that team up in order to play against five humans. And here we've started to, to, to beat some of the top amateur teams. Uh, our goal is in two months to go at the, to the Dota World Championships and there to play against a team of top professionals. You realize that there's a whole new industry around uh, human beings and teams playing video games, sometimes in big stadiums with a large human audience. I mean, we've got a picture on the screen right now. This is a very big business. Yep. You know, you could put that out of business, couldn't you? Uh, well, so, you know, humans still run track, even though cars are a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I mean, there's That's a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people are a little worried about this. I mean, a little frightened by what they might take over and do. You, you, share, you share that concern, don't you? Uh, yeah, so OpenAI, our core goal, our mission is about ensuring that the benefits of this technology is shared with everyone rather than locked up in one company or with a small group of people. And we think that these technologies, just like the Internet before it, are going to be deployed everywhere and really affect everyone's lives. Now, and so I think that a lot... I'm sorry, sorry, just let me ask you this. We've, we've got some examples of workers in high-tech companies, like Google, for example, who don't want their company to apply their technology to the military. How do you feel about applying your technology to the military? So, so one thing about the technologies that are being built today is that they're very general purpose. And in fact, the system that we built today was using algorithms that have already existed, uh, that we scaled them up much larger than has happened before. And so I think that the dual-use nature of these technologies is something that we're very cognizant of. And in the charter of OpenAI, which is a document we released recently, uh, that we talk a lot about how these technologies, that you need to start thinking about how are people going to apply these, that it's not just about doing scientific research. It's really about how these things affect the world. And so I think that, that you know, our company, that we're really focused on ensuring the benefits go to everyone, uh, but I, I think that we should all acknowledge that people are going to be applying these technologies in ways that we don't anticipate. And by thinking ahead and thinking about the ways that people will abuse and misuse these technologies, then we can choose to, to not invest in those, those specific application areas. It's fascinating. Greg Brockman, thanks very much for being with us. So you explain a difficult subject in a way that even I can understand, and that's a, a nice job. Well done, son. See you later, sir. Appreciate you being with us.